All right, guys, we're going to do a little bit of an open box deal. We're going to talk about GPS a little bit. First off, check this old antique out. Garmin Forerunner 201. We used these things for quite some time. They did what we wanted to do. Of course, they had the speed. They had a, a timer and they had a distance on it. Um, honestly, I can't remember what the refresh rate on this thing was, um, but it was not uh, great. It worked and it did what we wanted to do. But as we got faster and people got a little more uh, into the speed running thing, we really wanted something that was a little bit closer. Um, and then fortunately, SkyRC came out with these uh, units. This is a Racer's Edge version, which is really the same. They just changed the, the charge port. Um, really nice, picked up more satellites. It uh, 10 Hertz uh, refresh rate. So it was doing really well. We've had them for a long time. We've used them for a long time. It's nice and simple. Start, read, stop, read, done. It's quick and easy. But we got something new that I want to talk about today. And that's the new race box. And this is the race box micro. Got this in the mail the other day. I'm going to do some stuff with it. It's really a, it's a small unit. It's basically it's going to take up about the same kind of space as this wheel it's a little bit smaller but um this has an internal battery this does not have its own power source you have to power this you can do it with one two or a 3s battery i'm going to plug mine in the receiver it does have a small lithium battery in the bottom of it that is for uh maintaining memory and settings so that'll be good. Um, also comes with a little nice little carry bag. If you want to carry it in a little bag like that. And of course the quick start guide. This is the battery um, that's in the back of it. I already opened it up and put it in the unit because I want to have this thing where we can show it. Quick start guide is pretty simple. This thing has a series of LED lights in the top. This tells you what they do, what they mean when they're solid and or flashing. Of course, that shows you where that battery goes in the back. You know, it just snaps apart out of the case and you can stick that battery in there. Pretty, really simple. Doesn't take a whole lot to learn. Um, the unit works on an app on our phone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook this up like I would in my car. I've got the receiver pack and we've all talked about that. I run a receiver pack in my cars for a lot of reasons. Um, safety is first and foremost and uh, safety for my car. You know, if I can steer it and I can stop it, then uh, it's a whole lot less likely to cause a lot of damage if something does go bad in, in some part of it. This thing plugs right up. You've got the first flashing blue LED, which indicates that that's your Bluetooth and it's not connected. Here's your racer app, pull it up. Now I set this thing up to automatically connect to the last unit that was connected to it. If you don't do that, then you have to pick a unit. Um, just got the one right here, so it doesn't really matter. I set it up that way. It's got a drag session, track session, and a standalone session, which is what we will probably always use because otherwise these two sessions, you have to have the phone with it. It does not pick up. Once it gets out of Bluetooth range, it's not going to pick it up anymore. So in a standalone setting, that's where we're going to be running. Now your settings here, it's got an accelerometer, gyroscope, the GPS, some drag settings, track settings, power, standalone settings, the standalone memory. On the GPS, it's showing you all the satellites that it's connected to, and there are quite a few. Um, Currently, it's going between 21, 20, and 23 satellites. It's refreshing at 24.3 to 24. It'll go up to 25 uh, refresh rate, which is way more and way more precise than the than the old unit that we were using. Like I say, it has the drag settings, and you can set these up. You can do a custom setup. Same thing with track settings. It'll actually find tracks 
I'm gonna show you, there's tracks. If you're running any of these tracks, there's just like hundreds of them in here, I think. Um, but obviously that's not something that I'm gonna be using it for. But in standalone, <coughs> excuse me, um, is what we're gonna be running in. The only thing that I've seen that's gonna be really different is there's nothing that shows that this thing's connected. So my suggestion is that we go to the track setting and drive without track and you can see if I move this unit, it's connected. Obviously it's easier to do that way. Then we can just go back and go to that standalone. So now you know that thing's connected. Um, start recording. This thing will pick up even in here, guys. I mean, just me moving my arm. That's how precise it is. I'm, all I'm doing is moving my arm back and forth. Stop recording. And then we get this page back again. We can download record data. We have multiple sessions in here. Um, I will tell, say this is the one that we just did in the room. You can see it's actually going to show you a Google map. That's the room that I'm in right there. And I'm just swinging my arm around. The next one is one I did outside while I go. Um, and it actually shows me walking the driveway up and back. This is my drive. And I can actually move this graph to find where my top speed was. Let's just say that it's right here. For instance, just as an example, if my top speed is here, but I'm running at full throttle to here, this spot is wasted. It's just wasted time. It's wasted space and it's wasted energy and, you know, just that much more taxing on the batteries. So you can actually pinpoint where your fastest spot is. You got a Google map here. So if you know where you want to set your traps, you could use it for that. There's a lot of things that you could use it for and you can use it as a tool. So back to here to save this, I'm going to push on this log and hold it. And I'm going to, I can save it and process it as a drag session or a track session. And for our case, we're always going to go for track. It's going to pull this up and I'm going to push save without track. Now you see that this one is saved. I'm pushing on it. It's going to show five miles an hour, shows some accelerometer stuff and a few other things. But here's the thing. I want to push all data. Here we have that map again. We have all that stuff in the graph that we can utilize. The accelerometer um, for, you know, acceleration G's, cornering G's, combination G's. You know, some of that stuff is just something to look at. But really that speed is going to be a something that we're really going to pay attention to. Once we back to this page, I can push summary and here we go. See, it was showing, if we go back, it's showing five miles an hour. Here, summary, it was actually 4.89. And that could have been 5.23. It's showing tenths and hundredths. So this page is the most precise page in this unit. So this is what it is. Um... It's a little trickier because you got so much to do to get to this page. It's not like stop, read, and that's you got you got what you got. So you're gonna have to go through a process. I think that the best thing to do for what we do and how we like to prove what we're doing is we're gonna be on our first page. Um, like we say here, we're gonna be here drive without a track just to show that it's working then we go back i'm going to go to the standalone and i'm going to erase all the data so now there's nothing start recording we already established that we are connected to this unit so i'm going to just swing more back and forth here like i'm doing something stop recording download now I've got this data here, finger on it, hold, save it as a track session, save without a track, showing four miles an hour. We're gonna to go to this all data. It's gonna show me where I'm at in my house. Summary, 
3.88 miles an hour. This page rounds up. It's not what we want. The more precise data is going to be in this summary. And that's what we want right there, guys. So we could get, let's just say that 224 that everybody's looking for. 224.88. That's more than 224. You know what I'm saying? The, the unit that we're running now, this unit, uh, rounds up. At what point it rounds up, I don't really know. I believe that it rounds up anything over the mile per hour below it. So if you run a, a 224.1, um, it's going to show 225. I, that's what I believe. Um, I'm convinced that that thing rounds up anything over the mile per hour that you're, that it shows as a whole number. And, uh, but this thing shows it dead on precise. I think this is going to be a much more precise unit. And then not only that is having that, that data, which I've deleted it, but that data where I walked that driver, where I ran that run, we're going to have all that. So it's going to be like super close. So just want to kind of go over a little bit of this with you guys. I think this unit's going to be really popular. Um, I think it's going to help us and using it as a tool to pick out spots that are fastest and, and be able to tune a little something a little more. Um, and plus it gives all us dirt guys, you know, all the nerdy guys that like to have every little thing. Um, it gives us some more stuff to analyze and try to figure out how to go faster. Cause that's all we're doing anyway. We're always doing that. Um, so it's definitely a, a step up. Obviously if you add more units, you can add multiple units to this thing. So you could put it in, if you wanted to buy enough of them, you could put them in a car and leave them. Um, it just seems easier to me to have one and just switch it out over there. But uh, there it is, guys. The new Racebox Micro. Nice little baggie to put it in if you want to tote it. Quick little startup guide. And uh, that's all we need. It's a pretty cool unit. They're on sale everywhere. Um, I picked it up and it shipped from overseas somewhere and it got here in probably like two days, I believe. Um, so y'all uh, pick one up and, and let's start using this thing. I think this thing's gonna be a lot of fun and especially being more precise, that's gonna be a big, big step up from where we were. Appreciate y'all watching. Hope you got a little bit of information. So if you're looking at this thing, you know uh, a little bit more about it and you, at least you got a little bit more of an educated decision um, that you can make and uh, y'all keep watching the channel we got some runs coming up soon going back out we'll definitely be running this the new unit and uh, we're probably going to run them both and do a little bit of comparison so y'all keep watching and we'll get them on thanks for watching guys jimmy's rc speed shop so you're going to have to go through a process i think that the best thing to do for what we do and how we like to prove what we're doing is we're going to be on our first page. Um, like we say here, we're going to be here, drive without a track just to show that it's working. Then we go back. I'm going to go to the standalone. And I'm going to erase all the data. So now there's nothing. Start recording. We already established that we are connected to this unit. So I'm going to just swing more back and forth here like I'm doing something. Stop recording. Download. Now I've got this data here. Finger on it, hold. Save it as a track session. Save without a track showing four miles an hour we're going to go to this all data it's going to show me where i'm at in my house summary 3.88 miles an hour this page rounds up it's not what we want the more precise data is going to be in this summary and that's what we want right there guys so we could get let's just say that 224 that everybody's looking for 224.88 that's more than 224 you know what I'm saying? The, the unit that we're running now, this unit, 
uh, rounds up. At what point it rounds up, I don't really know. I believe that it rounds up anything over the mile per hour below it. So if you run a, a 224.1, um, it's going to show 225. I, that's what I believe. Um, I'm convinced that that thing rounds up anything over the mile per hour that you're, that it shows as a whole number. And, uh, but this thing shows it dead on precise. I think this is going to be a much more precise unit. And then not only that is having that, that data, which I've deleted it, but that data where I walked that driver, where I ran that run, we're going to have all that. So it's going to be like super close. So just want to kind of go over a little bit of this with you guys. I think this unit's going to be really popular. Um, I think it's going to help us and using it as a tool to pick out spots that are fastest and, and be able to tune a little something a little more. Um, and plus it gives all those dirt guys, you know, all the nerdy guys that like to have every little thing. Um, it gives us some more stuff to analyze and try to figure out how to go faster. Cause that's all we're doing anyway. We're always doing that. Um, so it's definitely a, a step up. Obviously if you add more units, you can add multiple units to this thing. So you could put it in, if you wanted to buy enough of them, you could put them in a car and leave them. Um, it just seems easier to me to have one and just switch it out over there. But uh, there it is, guys. The new race box Micro. Nice little baggie to put it in if you want to tote it. Quick little startup guide. And uh, that's all we need. It's a pretty cool unit. They're on sale everywhere. Um, I picked it up and it shipped from overseas somewhere and it got here in probably like two days, I believe. Um, so y'all uh, pick one up and, and let's start using this thing. I think this thing's gonna be a lot of fun and especially being more precise, that's gonna be a big, big step up from where we were. Appreciate y'all watching. Hope you got a little bit of information. So if you're looking at this thing, you know uh, a little bit more about it and you, at least you got a little bit more of an educated decision um, that you can make and uh, y'all keep watching the channel we got some runs coming up soon going back out we'll definitely be running this, the new unit and uh, we're probably going to run them both and do a little bit of comparison so y'all keep watching and we'll get them on thanks for watching guys jimmy's rc speed shop